What have you been up to, uh, by the way, Ma? <laughs> wow, guys, I... As much as I try to pretend I'm being busy, uh, I, I really have... I really have <laughs> things to do. <laughs> <laughs> as with most self-employed people, I think right now also like that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I do see some people being busy, like, especially the producers, I think they're having a lot of fun right now, like, just doing stuff on the computer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Computers, you know, they're like, I'm sure they're right, right at home. But like those of us, they want to be out, like we have a mobile job, yeah. we to meet people, we are, we are screwed. So <laughs> I, I, I miss, I miss gigging, man. Wow, I'm so, so, yeah. It, it feels so weird, cause like I was like, always like so busy, like juggling like my day job, and then like uh, gigging, uh, gigging, and then like uh, stuff. And now like I got ni- neither of them are, uh, yeah, yeah. And I'm like so much more free. Yeah. Uh, you but Jace has, Jace has privately confessed to me that he's enjoying this period. <laughs> Wait, <yeah. laughs> I, okay, I, I've been playing a lot of Minecraft, like too much Minecraft. Woo, Minecraft! Yeah, Minecraft. Like, I've been, oh man, there's a slippery slope. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there's still only so much you can play before your brain starts to rot. You know? That's true. You just want to like, do something, I don't know. Yeah. But what I'm most worried about is like after this month break is over, hopefully it's just a month. Then we all like we all just too lazy to get back to work. Yeah, I think like it's very yeah, I, I'm it's afraid a... of that happening. Right. <laughs> yeah, going back to work every day I think like a bit eh. <laughs> I'm but, so but... used to the way things are right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's only about oh week two only. Yeah, <laughs> I mean taking forever. Every day you take a day, it's like oh, halfway through the I mean it's like halfway through the month, but yeah. And that's if they they reopen everything at the on the day that they would say they would. Yeah, uh, I, I think uh. like it might. Even, okay, <laughs> let's say like even like uh if we end the CD period, I think it will be a gradual thing. It's not like everything yeah. is open in one shot. Probably, probably. I mean, uh, hopefully they relax it back to the ten people rule again. Yeah. Because that was like at least I can still open the studio again because they're yeah. like just closed. Yeah. But I mean, wearing the mask around is actually a good enough measure, I feel. Like just enforcing that people wear masks on the outside. Mm. Sure. So, but I think like one issue with masks is that some people, like, you know when you sneeze, right? They take their mask on to sneeze, and it's like, what's the point, bro? Who does that? <laughs> I've seen people that done that, and it's like, siam fa fa, man. Before like, the they point? enforce the fine, uh, actually, I still see a lot of people never wear masks. It's, mm. it's uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know, eh. It's just, they, they just don't feel it, I guess. I don't know. Then until when you have to... Ockham, mm. then they will wear their mask. <laughs> no even reason. now, you still see like boomers fighting the police. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just hopefully, you know, we just like ho- hope for the best, lah, right? To make our best, make the best of the situation, yeah. learn new stuff. I should learn how to read Trevor Clef. <laughs> yeah, well, make but, more but original. It, but I did Google before, you know, like let's say you sneeze into your own mask, right? Sometimes mm. you fall sick. Would you make yourself fall sick by sneezing into your own mask? Uh, you won't, uh, you won't, right? That's a I very mean, cheap question that uh, we uh, none of us here qualified to answer. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> you might, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we're not create phobia, like some people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, oh <well. laughs> This is just like, this just become like a total chat session and we're just like going on different tangents now. But that's good, that's good, that's good. That's uh, fine. It's, it's fun. Right. Yeah, they can edit Yeah. I think this is great. I I I I will I will listen to this. <laughs> Seamless, but I'll listen to this. How long have you how long have you been talking for this? Idea, the recording has been going for fifty one minutes. Oh okay, okay, yeah. three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh let's see, back to Tone House. Right. So you got your amps, you got your you got your keyboard, you got a drum. And then like you have, you know you have a you have an Indian monitoring system. I think that's that's great. That's crazy, right? Like you give everybody uh their own floor wedge, right? But you, you have the option of using an Indian monitoring system, and I think that that really makes a break, right? Because like so many times like you can't really get everybody to hear everything, and then like, especially if your band wants to run a click, uh, yeah. having I think that's like one of my favorite parts about like practicing at Tone House, yeah. is that you know I can I never had to worry about everybody being able to hear everybody. 
and mm-hmm. it strikes me the, the, the bands that, that really use the IEMs to the fullest are the concert bands, like mm-hmm. the bands that, that, that like, probably have to use that on stage and they want to simulate, they want to simulate, sorry, simulate that, <laughs> that situation during rehearsal, so they'll use IEMs as well during yeah. rehearsal. Majority of bands still actually prefer not to use IEMs. Oh, I, I prefer to use IEMs, uh, but I think like, a lot, the thing is, IEMs is so, okay, like, in a, in a live setting, lah, right? IEMs are very, it's a very costly investment, and not everybody can afford or get to use those situations. Uh. I think like more, most casual musicians, like jamming musicians, uh. but I think for like, working musicians, like, of, like, we often get like, opportunities to use uh, like, like the venues or like the backlines wire system. It, it, for, me, for me, it depends on, on, on the venue itself. Like, like, I mean, your point is that some venues afford it, can afford it, some venues can't. But, like, is, it, is there a point? Sorry, uh, you cut off there for me. Was, was there a point? Like, some venues can afford it, some venues can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, no, I think also, like, like preference, uh, like, okay, personally, do you like monitoring systems? Like, uh, Indian monitoring? I, okay, if I'm in a pub, playing in a pub, like, pub uh-huh. 40, and I don't want to use IEMs because I want to hear the crowd true, true, true. what's happening. I don't want to feel isolated from them. Mm. And and I have to know what's happening around me, so I have to be aware. Yeah. When you have IEMs in, you are isolated. Yeah, that's true. From everything else. And it usually only works on big stages when there's a lot of slapback mm. from the from the hall. Yeah. You can't talk to the, the drummer because he's across the stage. Or you mm. can't talk to the keyboardist because he's far away and you can't just be shouting across or even looking at them, it looks very unprofessional on camera. Yeah, 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 that's true. So, I find it's more of a practical thing for me rather than like a want to have. Yeah, actually I like I like having like both at the same time. Of course, like, you get, you know, like sometimes like, I'll, like, I will just like I've have played shows where I had both and like, sometimes I'll just take out one side to hear like stuff. Right. Oh, about that, right? You know, you know, you know, if you go I am in and you've got a cat behind you, right? Uh-huh. Actually, the the rumble is all in view. Yeah. You yeah. Can feel it. I think, and see, that's the thing about running the cat, right? Like, you can feel it. The rumble, yeah. You it, you have to, like, it's weird when you, like, think this and you don't feel. Yeah, like, I think, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, I think, like, when I first started playing bass and then, like, I first played, like, I went to, like, like, back then, I went to, what, like, Sweetie, right? And then I played in the real bass M, right? And then I felt it, and it's like, oh. Right, yeah, the M, you're right. Yeah. Something like that. That's how you see, like, I have the, like, City Music now, right, we have the base, like, the M cap stack, right? Yeah. So, like, sometimes I can just, like, play through the 4x10, the M1x15, and then just, like, oh. Yeah, and see how the base M has, like, upgraded itself into the front of the showroom now. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, like, moving up in front now, it's, like, near the door. <laughs> yeah. Before, before Because the office had... expanded. <laughs> yeah, but, like, but yeah. also because I join City Music, so like I want I want bass stuff to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> personal personal agenda. <laughs> yeah, it's good, it's good, it's a good thing. Yeah. I, and I feel like since we made that move, we have sold more bass amps. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And more bases. Our base wall is getting very empty. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I'm waiting for the next shipment of GNL. Oh really? You were buy, buying buying GNL bases. Yeah, we, yeah, people are buying, like, you know, I think, like, slowly people are, like, looking into, let's see, internet now, right, you can see, like, in the past, right, people didn't really know G&L was, is the offender's company, like, after his offender, right, like, the L in G&L is the offender, right, and that's where he, like, worked at to his death, like, right now, actually, the president of the company is still his wife, like, Phyllis Fender. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I didn't know this was so interesting. Yeah, so like people, people are slowly starting to see, oh, if like the real fender, you can say, is GNL and like for the price, right, they are, they are amazing. Like you can get like American made guitars for like below $2,000 and all around $2,000 and they sound and look and feel fantastic for that price point. Huh? Actually, actually, I have to say that fenders actually got better like after they changed the... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, personally, because uh, I'm not sure what was, what was wrong, but then before before they sold the company, there was a lot of like QC issues. I feel like yeah. and, and they were just there wasn't enough of like standardization. 
Yeah, back then lah, back then. But like as they expand out, then like you have like e- e- economy of scale, right? Then you can like en- enforce more QC. Mm. But I think like with like most big companies now, you can sort of like. That. But the thing is, nowadays like you don't get a fender American, right? The ultra, you know, looking at very high numbers. Yeah, yeah. And I but guess like I, I don't I, know. I you fender. Like for me, like I I never really saw the appeal. Like, cause I have played. Like, I mean, I I have a Fender myself. Like, I have one here. Mm. Right, and then it's a Mexican Fender Mexican, and I love it, and I'll never sell it. Like, even though I don't even play it much nowadays, but it's like sometimes like you just get like certain Fenders that sound better than American, and and like I don't know. I think that should be a case uh. Like I I have, my Mexican is like what nine hundred dollars, eight nine hundred dollars, and I play. I played so many Americans that just don't sound and feel the same. Uh, but I think like with GNL is like what I realize is that like the tributes, which is a budget series, they are they sound very close because that's the thing, they use the same pickups. But they uh they they still feel they're a bit different, lah, but they, it's like a fraction of the cost. Do they do you have any five string key bases? Five string keys, GNL? Yeah, I have, I have. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the ones that you try lah, the jazz bass, remember? No, but I want a P bass. I won't oh. buy it. Oh, okay, so five string P's, very actually like five string P basses, like very few people right. make them. Yeah. So like GNL doesn't make. I I tried to order a uh, five string P bass, but they don't. Aiden was also asking on our live stream the other day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of Jay's friends uh, Aiden. Oh yeah. 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 Five string GNL bass. Yeah. No, but P bases are five string P bases because you see P bases are split coil humbucker, right? Yeah. So like it's it's, it's like if you make a five string, like one of it will be uneven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not meant to. Yeah. Not yeah. Meant to. But it'll be great if they can, lah. Uh. Yeah. But I think that's why I like my ding wall, cause like inside each ding wall is a reverse P. Is it? Yeah. So like ding wall artist. Jay. Yeah. So like this is a this inside is a reverse P actually. Oh. Yeah. So like I can if I solo the like, neck pickup right, it really and it really sounds like a P. Nice. Yeah. That's why I got the most popular thing. Can't get the P based song. Yeah. Okay, well I'm off tangent again, but uh, this is fun. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, but uh, when I think like we totally like we ask the question, but we totally you know go this way. Right? What made you start Tone House? Like what made you want to start Tone House? Oh yeah. Oh, that was the original question. <laughs> <laughs> I think this will be a very long episode, uh, but it's fine. Uh, I, I've always wanted to start my own studio, rehearsal studio, because there were just not enough good studios at that point in time. Mm. Yeah. There was, there was live and... Okay, like, I grew up I went to Back Beat, I went to L Cube, I went to Live M. Yo, L Cube. L Cube. Yeah, Live M isn't even there anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Live M closed down. Yeah, and uh, like, where, where else? Uh? Uh, Pink Noise, Pink Noise. AMG. Pink Noise, oh, that is. AMG. AMG, yeah. Pink Noise, sir. I don't know, I, I, actually, I only started jamming like, what, four years ago, so. Alright. Oh, four years ago, eh? I only play bass for like five years, uh, so. Oh, okay. So yeah, so so I grew up in all these jam studios, and I I and I and I and I and I wonder why is it so difficult to have a nice jam studio, mm. and why isn't anyone doing it yet? I mean, I mean the 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 most comfortable that my band got in was was live M like, because yeah, I think a lot of people use live M. Yeah, yeah, they were very thick thick thin. They were mm. sad. The isolation was pretty good. Mm. Uh, the equipment was decent. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, so, so, so when Live M started closing down, and then like, uh, oh yeah, there's one more. Sorry, the one at uh, Woodland. Tone House. No Tone House. End of the hell. Factory. <laughs> yeah, End of Factory. Uh, End of Factory. 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 End of Early, like mid last year, mm-hmm. yeah. So, so I, I, I felt like that was about the time 
Yeah, yeah even yeah, and, and that, and that what Kung Lao's used to be, uh, music on song, yeah. over the down. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, and oh, and one more, the biggest space, DMG, is it? Is it DM, DM, uh, DMC? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I can't remember, like, yeah, there's one at Bedok, they also, the big space also closed down, so it's like, then I, 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 I thought this is a good time to have a look at uh, what, what we can do. Mm-hmm. So I went up to, so I was asking around, asking around, do you guys know any good spaces? So I went to look at industrial space, then I went to look at some retail space, and then I came across Park Lane, mm-hmm. then I went to Music on Song. And I, I fell in love with it actually. I was like, I love the space, I love how it was so sleazy, the whole building was like, cold <laughs> and like, smelly and, <laughs> and like, they were just, Heaven, One of a kind uh, tenant client. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so like, you know, it's not like there are no rules like, in the building, basically. So, I, 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 we did the whole place from scratch. Mm, nice. And, yeah. and uh, I, I wanted to build something that felt nice, sounds nice, and looks nice. That was just my key consideration. Uh, so that's why I notice I don't have any carpets in the studio because carpets contribute to smell and smell is yeah yeah yeah. Yes, thing. yeah it's a thing like people don't like things that don't smell nice and though they don't think of it first yeah, yeah but okay I, I've been to studios where it's like dank yeah, yeah. It, usually yeah. when I leave the studio that's what I remember the smell <laughs> yeah it consciously screws with your brain like yeah. you know what it is but you don't know why and it's well, I mean, you know what, sometimes like, you just <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, and then I, and then, yeah, I thought that the model worked, people liked it. Uh, we had a lot of, I mean, I had, we had a lot of seating issues, uh, I mean, uh, agreeably because, I, I mean, I'm the new new owner and I don't know much about running a studio. It's my first time trying out and there's so many things to try and error. Mm. And yeah, so I mean, we're still we're still developing and growing as a business. Yeah. It's but, a but I think yours is a it's a success. Uh. I think I, I I love this stone house is my hands down the best studio. Yeah, like, but all is all is our margins are still quite low. Mm-hmm. Because we, it, the, I mean the the fact of the matter is that is that my my neighbors started complaining, so I couldn't open the studio yeah, yeah. by five pm. I had to I had to like limit my operation hours, and that. Mm. And that I can only really accept bookings from five onwards, and mm. it's on weekdays and, and on weekends, like one on Saturday and Sunday the whole day. And it is like I'm not making a lot of money from the place. Mm. That's why I still have to work as a musician every day mm. on my side to earn my own income because the, the school is not paying me. You know, it can barely pay itself in the mm. club, my interns. Mm. So it's a uh, it's still a tricky business model, and I can see why many studios have failed. Yeah, I, I say that. I say failed because the the it ended now. Uh. It just ended and they didn't sustain itself and they have, I don't see them like buying new equipment. Mm. Uh, and and it's not flourishing lah, you know. Mm. And and show is better because studio margins are small. Like jam studios, not non recording studios. Recording studios are a different class, they earn their money from like a whole bunch yeah, of other yeah. things. Like yeah. But jam like the jam studio part is very, very tricky. Like in fact, right now I'm thinking of converting the bedroom into a recording recording studio, mm-hmm. so that the living room can be the main rehearsal space and then the bedroom can be. Uh, so it's a bit like Leo Studio lah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. And then it's a big space for for the bands and everything. Yeah, I think that that sounds that sounds like a good idea actually. Right? Yeah, I would not like even booking. Mm-hmm. I just I just I need I just need to map and see if like that losing all both right? yeah. to bring in the recording income. Yeah. Mm. So, but then again, it might not be a bet that I want to take because many people are moving. They are moving out of recording studios into their own house. That's true. But the only, they work out their own house. Yeah. Yeah. And they're rent to pay. Mm. Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, music parlor. They also mm. operate as a jam studio and a recording studio because the jam studio helps to pay for bills also. Yeah. But in, I'm sure the main main money making model is still recordings. You know, their the project, their productions, and so on. Yeah. Sure. So it's it's tricky la. And even leave I mean the main money is also probably not from the Yeah, from the rehearsals. Because how, how much are people willing to pay for rehearsals and gems? That's the truth of the matter. Mm. 
Yeah. It's the same truth, but. Yeah, I guess like, like in our industry, music industry as a whole, it's just always like harder, right? Because like they are like musicians are poor, lah, right? <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, we can't splurge on things. You know, it's not like. I I know some expats coming into the studio and like they just, like there's one band they bought a twenty four hour package and they they haven't really used much of it and they don't seem to remember that they have a package. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> good for you. Good for you. I'm like, okay, like free, free cash or why not? But it, it's like, but really, really, like those are minority of customers. Mm. Most, most of them are people like us. You know, I I would do sort of a pinch if I do. We just have my studio more than once a month, for example. Like my band, we just have my studio once a month, and we pay for it. Like I pay for my own studio. I pay my own portion of my band to my own studio. <laughs> yeah, and 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 it's uh. Yeah, I think like cause like for us working, right? At least like the the musicians I work with, right? Like there's a ready to be practice anyway, right? Mm. Cause because it is like you you spend time, you spend money, and you just cut your margins anyway. So like uh like and when you do have to jam, usually you try to like keep the cost down la. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fair. Uh, which is fair, uh, which is I mean we want especially like if you are a lot of our income is just from playing music. Like we need to like, maximize that margin. Yeah. And you know it's it's uh most working musicians if if you don't rehearse better still, right? Because yeah. Why waste why waste money on rehearsal, spending time going there? Yeah, I I think I I haven't like most of my working bands we don't rehearse anymore. Like we just like agree on songs and then send recordings and then we uh, we just put to go. Yeah, yeah. Also, that's like a skill set necessary lah. But I guess like for like non working musicians, they still want to jam more. But like I mean, it seems like for my like, my musubi side, like we still jam, but like we also don't jam very often. Mm. And most but most most of these bands don't rehearse anymore lah. Yeah. Only only the the dedicated ones do. Mm-hmm. But I'm kind of expecting that after this period, right, there'll be a lot of people who want to jam. <laughs> mm, I think I think you're getting a huge wave after this, huh? Yeah, I hope so. Hope so, uh. I hope so. I hope so. Everybody eating. Cause everybody yeah. at home practicing, then now they 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 just want to like have human contact and make music and shit. <laughs> I think I'm be more gradual because people will be like, huh, ah, is it really gonna be over? What if I book now and they decide to cancel this kind of thing? Yeah, but, but because also like, like before this lockdown thing, it was like. I we couldn't get a place. Like we I wanted to jam with a few friends and everywhere was like book. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like I was like trying to help me book phone house. But it was yeah. like packed. <laughs> we we got last week bookings before the lockdown. Like everyone was trying to jam before like everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like three days before three days before was like the best three days we had in the whole month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, Hello, can you go in gym? They're like, okay. Ten people, ten people. Yeah, yeah, like I think hopefully, hopefully lah, uh, we'll relax back to the ten people rule, and then you know, hopefully, yeah. Well, I mean, I also like to mention that 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 there's like a couple of the studios that open after after we did mm-hmm. the, the Tremble Cube, mm-hmm. and then the Trinity something ah. Uh. Or oh, or oh. they opened before we did, but they were on, they were also like new, and then there was the a play by year. All right. right. Studios. Hey, but year one seems to be more like for a gig place. I think yeah, it's yeah. Like, it looks it looks really good for gigs. Yeah, yeah, they got like nice stage and then it's like yeah. things. I don't know what it is. I'm gonna search. Eighty people. Actually, I was supposed to play a gig there. But yeah, I saw. Yeah, but then like, after that, it got cancelled. So. Yeah, and 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 I'm glad that they did because like Tone House is barely supporting those. Hardcore metal core gig. Yeah, yeah, I know. I I played a few gigs yeah. already, and just like yeah, we it's just like it's like stuff is just on the verge of breaking. <laughs> I mean, stuff already broke, uh, so yeah, stuff already broke, and, and I'm glad like Trevor Pugh came out with like uh, not Trevor like uh, the Stay by yeah, 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 yeah. Please, I mean, yeah, they they can have those those like gigs that can mm. yeah. And Trevor Cube also working on their on their own like live space also lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, they 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 said they have a big space coming up, right? They already opened up like the room for yeah yeah yeah. Which seems to be which seems to be. I heard I heard there's cool things you can do there, like again, play play games and watch shows and oh yeah, they have a they have a they have a, they have a rig set up for that lah. Yeah, 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 it's quite cute, right? It's quite cute, it's quite cute. You can even like press a button and record yourself. Yeah, yeah, like the the 
the guy is pretty handy. Yeah. Mm. He said yeah. he, he program everything himself. Like, yeah, he program everything himself. Yeah. yeah. He's pretty really? good. Yeah. Yeah. And they are like doing like all the construction themselves, like all the even like all the sound panels, the acoustic panels they make themselves. Eh? Oh nice. Yeah. I mean, this is a pretty cool place. Like you can check out Travel Cube as well. Yeah. Right. Go go do it. I think I think all the studios. I think we have more than enough bands wanting to jam. Yeah, it's like it's. I think it's really about like cooperation, working things out, lah. Yeah. 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 Cause I like think, Tone House, is, I think like Tone House, like if you want to go somewhere central, I think Tone House, is the best, right? And then like Travel Cube is like on the east side, so you know like you you have like some good like it's ideally we have like good studios in every sector. Yeah. Yeah, like North South East where everyone has good place to jam. That would be great, man. Yeah. And and actually, oh yeah, talking about talking about uh about 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 Tonaus, Pomo is Pomo is finally gonna reopen like soon. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it, it looks quite cool, man. Like the new concert and everything. And yeah. I'm quite excited for the the dining options that are gonna come. Gonna so cool. far, I can only see the outside the facade a little bit, uh. I just but, yeah, I just I think I just praying that they have a subway again. <laughs> Yo, you know like last time I used to go to like Pomo to eat Subway like every day or every other day Cause like it's like relatively healthier and it's not expensive but I yeah, like, like the most Burger there, I miss the most Burger Oh, oh the most Burger, but I yeah. miss the chips, the chips chip shop I miss most chicken bro <laughs> Most chicken Alright, but like now it's like everything is so far away and uh, Oh yeah, oh, you guys have to eat there also right? Yeah, we yeah. So now every day downstairs are our eating house. Uh. Shout out to Shout our out eating to house. Eating house. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I eating house. Oh, I eating house. Second floor one. Yeah. Taiwan of the year. Twenty twenty. Yeah, the Taiwan place is great in our eating house. Yeah, yeah. The, actually, our eating house is great, man. I love the food actually. Oh, but like, but I need some thing. diversity, yeah. Uh. Huh? Need a bit of diversity, yeah. Uh. Okay, yeah, Pomo Pomo faster, finish. Yeah. There's only so much of Tukanaka, Tukanaka can do every day. <laughs> <laughs> the stream has, I mean, this uh, this recording has been going for 1 hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> Yo, I think I think I will split this in like 2 episodes actually. Yeah, you got a lot of editing to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, I think I'll drop this bit. Okay, then. Anything else? Uh, I think, yeah. Let me see. We covered most of the Tone House stuff, right? Uh, let's see. Are you are you I'll doing any originals? Uh? Currently, the only original artist I play for is Nathan, right? Nathan. I mean, I mean like your own things. Eh? Oh, my own thing, eh? Yeah. I I never never felt like it's to write my own stuff actually. Like, I mean, okay. like, I, I enjoy playing my own lines. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel, like, when I play for a few songs, I feel, like, I feel the freedom of, like, creating my own bass lines. So I, I don't feel like I'm playing something wrong because there isn't anything to play. Yeah. Okay. Like, unless they have a demo track, and demo track, like, eh. Yeah. Uh, no, like, no, no itch to write my own song. It's not, not, not something, it's not like, it's like, it's like drawing. I can't draw and I don't want to draw and, like, nothing. <laughs> you actually, actually, I feel that also. I, I think, I think like I'm good at playing what is there, like what is given, mm. but I'm not very good at, at like drawing, like writing la. Yeah, yeah, like creating something yeah. from, yeah. Like lyrics, I'm completely terrible. Yeah, yo, yo, I can't, I can't. The lyrics is another, it's another thing uh. Yo, the thing is that I'm actually good, I, I, I think I'm quite good at writing, but lyrics is a whole different matter, man. Yeah, man. Me- melody is okay. Yeah. I guess, I don't know. I think it's quite a very good melody, so I always like. I don't know how my band like writes the lyrics, like over the stuff that like my band writes. You got lyrics for your band? Like, like you know, like my my aggressive. Like, right? <laughs> like, like the thing is like like the the, the you no know, we have like odd meters and stuff, yeah. and like and then like he can like my 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 vocalist can still write stuff over it, and then it's like that's crazy. I can't even write a good bass line, what? It's. Actually, 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 what I realized about 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 melodies over all time, right, is that it 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 it's quite a it's quite a big factor in making the all time feel normal. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah, like it, it can have the, it can have the effect. Mm. Like, especially when the melody flows through like the the, the barring. Yes. 
Definitely. Yeah. Because all those odd meter songs are that's the way I remember them. Uh. How yeah. it's sung. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. which is why like think like Dream Theater is so like accessible to non musicians though, because yeah. like you don't feel you don't like, feel when you're, yeah, when you're playing it it's it's hard last, right? But when you listen to it like it's, it flows naturally. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah, then when you try to practice it and then you break it down into a barring and then you mind F yourself. Yeah. Suddenly you, you know, <laughs> like, shit, what is this, what is this time signature change? What is this metric modulation? And it's like, uh. <laughs> but like, but the vocal melody doesn't. The vocal melody flows through the whole song. Yeah, yeah it's great, man. Yeah. Hmm. And, and not just like, I mean like melody as a whole, right? Melody is such an important function of songs. Mm. Right? If you listen to like Pliny or this, right? Like, you know, like, it is odd meter, like, and it's like, if you really try to learn, it's inc- insane, uh, it's like 13 8 and stuff, right? Uh. Mm. Like even the four four stuff, right? The groupings are so hard to catch, right? But like the guitar melody just like flows through the whole song, oh, naturally. Yeah. Pliny. Yeah, Pliny. P L I N I. You you should go listen and it's good stuff. Crazy crazy stuff. Yeah. Very uh, new future guitar. New music. future is there what? I don't know. I don't know what kind of genre. Yeah. It's prog. I mean it's prog la. It's but like. Steve Vai say Pini is the future of guitar. Oh. Yeah. I've been listening to a lot of uh, Titus Coyote. Oh, yeah. And uh, Mac Miller. Yeah. Oh, is it? A lot of the NPR stuff, the Tiny Jazz stuff that came out recently is damn good. Oh, yeah. The NPR stuff really keeps getting better. I don't know how they do it, man. Yeah, it's so good. Oh, I love it. Their live sound should win some kind of award. Yeah, right. Damn nuts. Same. <laughs> it, 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 okay, so, so, okay, so what happened, okay, so what happened is that I, 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 wanted to, I wanted to start a live, live session for Tone House. Mm. So I wanted to start a podcast session and a live yeah. session. So live session is for like bands, like NPR style, like Canadian style. I want to do it semi, semi-strip down style like NPR. Uh-huh. So I actually, I actually went to, 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 to analyze what they use for recordings. And then I, I Facebook, messaged the, Facebook messaged the NPR audio guy. Mm-hmm. Wait, there there is a video on YouTube that they break down their live recording setup. Yeah, yeah. Josh Josh Robustin. So I yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, I think there was something that didn't explain like uh, vocal monitoring. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. So so, uh, some of my friends told me that that they don't have vocal monitors and I didn't really believe when I asked him. He said, Yeah, really, they don't. So actually, in NPR, right, they're singing to no monitors. It's crazy. Like, I think because because they are, I think they are like stage noise, right? It's very low. It's very low. It's very low. Yeah. 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 It, it, and then it, the artists that they have on there, they are that that level. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because a lot of singers feel very uncomfortable when they can't hear. Yeah. And they tend to push, you know, and then it sounds very like. Yeah. But yeah. but I mean yeah. But he he also mentioned for the louder bands he has a uh, monitoring at the ceiling. Mm. Yeah. So he does have monitors, uh, like when he needs it for 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 that. Yo, that actually, uh, let let actually I. You know what? We should we should work together on this. Like make our own sessions. Yes, yes. And yeah, I actually actually, right. I actually want to try out the shotgun thing. So I asked, I asked Josh also like uh the shotgun mic. How does he control the bleed? Because uh oh. yeah, he said he said he actually said it is a problem. He he didn't he didn't deny the fact that the shotgun mic that they use is can be troublematic. That's why if I say it really matters how he places. Yeah. The is pointing now. For, for example. Because shotgun mic is so directional, right? Yeah. We need to, okay. yeah. I think this one, right, you can ask, I like, think, full coming help. It, it's not just directional, the pickup is very far, though. It's yeah. It's sitting in that range, it's not near, you know? Yeah, it's not near feel, yeah. Yeah. Like, I think, uh, we should ask, I like, think, full coming also, lah. You know, dating yeah. mic. I, 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 it's good already. I don't know about Yeah, so, but, what, what I love about shotgun mics, right, is how it sounds. Yeah, it sounds, uh, actually, the thing is, right, I didn't even know, Shotgun mic for vocals can be so good. Yeah, right. It's insane. Yeah, and then like, then I did like, uh, Tingfu introduced me to like using vocals, like shotgun mic for vocals. Yeah. And then like, and then I, I start looking more into it, and then it's like, realized that MP, I listen to NPR, but then we like notice the uh, the mic, and then it's like, wait, oh, yeah, she NPR is using shotgun, so and it's like, oh, I know it sounds so, yeah. it sounds so good, yeah. The yeah, NPR right. uh Tom mission. That was oh, the first event. time I yeah. ever noticed that a vocalist is singing to a shotgun mic and I was like, I feel yeah. like right in front of him. <laughs> yeah, 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 it sounds so, it, it sounds, it, okay, that's the difference between the shotgun mic and the condensed mic. The shotgun mic sounds so live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. 
sounds so real. I don't know. It, it sounds more real than any condenser can ever be. Mm. Like when we when we, when we when we when we speak to a condenser mic, we we know like it's just it, it's like you know. But the shotgun is like wow, it's magic. <laughs> and another thing is that for, like for the backup singers, uh -huh. it's just one shotgun mic, so there's three stand around the shotgun mic, and, right. it, and it really creates a distance. It really sounds far away. Uh -huh. it doesn't yeah, do yeah, yeah, yeah. Great distance like post pro. Mm -hmm. post -pro is the uh, backup is all thing into the into the condenser. You need to like create the uh, need, need to create, create that with that 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 uh stage like sound staging right? Yeah, 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 but on a shotgun mic you don't have to do that. You know, it's like wow man. <laughs> and another thing is like a lot of things they have to move the head. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. With shotgun you don't need to worry so much. Yeah, and some things are not confident. Or maybe they're confident, but they forget and they pull away too much. Yeah. Oh, they're like, oh, oh, they're like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's really annoying. One, uh, one, then, one of the their concerts that I recently hooked, um, hooked on is the Jacob Holly one. He has, oh. he has two shotgun mics on him. One is in front of him when he's playing, when he's sitting down. Then when he turns and plays the piano, there's another one on top. Oh, so it's like nice. super like, what? Like, it's damn good. Uh. That, that, that one's mind blowing. Yeah, we have to we have to try this out, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Find, find after this is over, right? Like you get simple, then you just all try 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 one final day and just do do this kind of shit. You got shotgun, uh. You got zoom shotgun, uh, But uh, yeah, simple come in, uh, I think it'll be fun. Like, like, like I really love his JT shotguns, yeah. Uh, they sound so good. Mm hmm. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. So live session. Maybe you yeah. can collect about this. Yeah, I can collect. I we got actually I have a like I don't know if you saw, but we had a band come in and play. Mm. Right, and then like I'll be we have a few more bands lined up like musicians who are coming in. But then like, I think and, like from time to time and, like after the things are uh, go over to Tonhouse and do it. Oh, you already do your own live sessions, Yeah, in yeah. our in service. the pro audio showroom. <laughs> yeah, but no drums lah. Uh, the cajon, no. Oh. But we getting drums maybe I don't know. I want to do uh, I want to see these drums for like NTR style lah. So like very muted. Very yeah. New. Maybe rod or like light stick. Oh yeah. Or you know, like actually, cause like we have like, can do keyboard drums also, uh. oh. and also we got mini, we got Ableton push, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. So we can use that to like do drum stuff. Well, if you keyboard. can get a live like muted drum to work, uh. fantastic. Ah, I mean, really depends on drummer. Really depends yeah. on the drummer. Yeah, the drummer know how to control his dynamics, uh. It it only work for the great bands, uh. Like really. Yeah. You will never work on the. <laughs> okay. The drummer needs to know what he's doing, uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and it's it's hard to play soft actually for drummers. Yeah. Yeah. And I think most drummers are loud and louder. Oops. Yeah, and and yeah, yeah, because they never practice playing soft. Yeah. So you know, yeah, it's just it's unnatural for them. I guess. Yeah. Yo. Yeah, I think like one of the like. Uh, no, Uncle Louis, uh, Louis Sotelo, right? Hmm. Uh, so yeah, no, sorry. Uh, ah. he, well, he's, he's, like, I think, like, when I see him play drums, right, well, he's, he's, like, his dynamic control is amazing, and he can play so soft, right? But, it, I don't know, you can feel it, you can feel it, like, I think, like, when you, sometimes, like, you, when you play drums, like, people like to play loud because I can feel it, right? But when, like, Uncle Louis plays soft, right, well, you can still feel everything, right? like, and the dynamics are all there, like the groove is there, it's just like like if we play with a real drummer, like a drummer who really knows how to control his, like to play stuff, right? I think it's a very different game changer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean like like Valve Pack, yeah. Valve Pack is like soft. Yeah, 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 you're right. That one is a, another level, that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Valve Pack. Yeah. You know yeah. when you left me alone for the live stream, Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was at the last part. I just playing Wolfpack. I was just chilling and packing. <laughs> watch the you should just watch the MSG uh yes. concert, the full concert. If you haven't watched live in Madison Square Garden, oh okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. please go and do it. That, that is so please. good, man. Insane. Like I know, like uh, some people think like Wolfpack is a bit like overrated, but I don't know man, they are so good. Who, who, who said that? Who are these like, people? Okay, I, th I think it's more in like the Reddit community. I mean, I mean... I, I mean can sense some sort, I think. I think with music, no matter where 
like what genre of music, right? Like you always have like people who yeah, play like, all men, yeah. Sprinting sock. But like because okay. in like example like Reddit, the base Reddit, right? Like there are a lot of like people who start the base called Jodat. Because I mean Jodat is is killing on the base, uh, right? And then like there are people saying start saying that like, you know Jodat is overrated, kind of thing. It's like it's like how people like hate start hating like a lot of bases start hating on DB five hundred four. Nah, I mean, I mean, Judah is is like, I mean, he's not, he's not, he's not like, he's he he's not break, he's not like breaking boundaries like he's not, he's not. wise and music wise, but he's just so tasty. He's tasty. The thing is, right, like his yeah. groove, his groove, his groove, his touch, his tone, and his yeah. Tone. Makes a pentatonic sound nice. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. If you actually like break down, like so, like when you learn perfect stuff, you translate perfect stuff, you realize that everything is pentatonic. Pentatonic is all. It's obviously even diatonic, like to some degree. It's like and like actually a lot of it, I realize that he actually play minor over major a lot. Mm. And like he still sounds good, like cause like it's just because of choosing the right note. I don't think it's like major. Like, I think they just play a lot of open chords, so like yeah, that's true. High dominance. So like a minor blues will work for me, Yeah. But like, it's a, it's a, like, it, has, it can be pentatonic, but it can still be very tasteful. I think like, if you learn gospel stuff, right, you, yeah. you, you, you know that, you know, pentatonic is king. Right? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with using pentatonic, it's about, it's how you use it. Yeah, and which, which, and how you start, and which pentatonic you use. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, I mean, like, I, I, of course I play prog, right, then I start learning about, aesthetic, like, different, different modes and different, uh, like, like, using, I use a lot of harmonic minor. Yeah. Right, cause like, cause you got more extensions and to work with, it's more color. There's more color to work with. It's yeah. like, thing, right? Yeah, but then like, I, I, but the end of the day, it's like I just want to work on like, you know, mastering pentatonic. Like, do you like be like valve pack level of like pentatonic, or like Andrew Gouche, you know, like just you know, it's all the gospel gods, you know, they just play, they just kill it on pentatonic. Yeah, it, it, I mean, I mean, uh, even, even. Who is it? Jimmy Haslip. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's also he's also not playing like super out. Mm. Even on his solos or what. It's like melodic. Like this is really just like uh you know diatonic notes and just tasty tasty chops and good shapes. Yeah. It's just yeah. And it applies to guitar also, right? Because like some of the some of the tastiest stuff is just pentatonic. Right. Like even like like yeah. say John Mayer, you know, a lot of it is bent on it also. Right? Yeah, it is, yeah. And like speaking of John Mayer, you know, like Pino, like the stuff he play for John Mayer is is just oh, you know, it's it's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's it's crazy and a lot of it is just like just you know, just hitting the cop tone, like your your triads, right? But it's just like where you like where on the neck you play those triads. Yeah. Your cop tones, right? And then like it just translates so well. Yeah. And like he sticks in that double stops here and there. Yeah, wow. And then so he's good. He's going like that. I don't know, man. After, after playing a while, I find that, like, you can learn the exact lick, right, that they play. Oh. And then like when you play, right, it just doesn't sound like, it sounds nothing like the way they do. Yeah. It's a great, man. I agree. You have to find you the, the, the way that you play the best and then that you are most comfortable with. And then I think, right, if you do that enough, right, nobody can replicate you, right? <laughs> then you'll yeah. become, like, in that class, uh. Yeah, like, I'm trying to your date, you know, practice something and then suddenly every, then they realize that people are following them. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, man. It's like, like I, I have a tendency to play very straight. Very straight? Yeah, like, like I don't really, my, my, I don't, like a lot of things that I should swing more, I don't swing as much as I should. Oh. Right, so it's like, it's just like, you know, certain things, like, like you know, how you play is also very different, huh? Mm. Like someone like like attention right Charlie Puth attention right like uh, 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 someone like comment to me he's like eh hey, I think you are the straightest attention I ever heard and I was like attention is to get yeah right usually such a nice bass line but like you know like you know like just because like one person played like two, like two people playing the same exact same notes right can sound very different just because of how you swing it yeah, actually actually the actually the song is quite hard to play yeah. Deceivingly easy, uh. sounds yeah, easy, yeah. Uh, but Cause no, like, if you play it too straight, right, like, you will, it's not very boring. <laughs> like, even like, Bruno Mars stuff, right, also, like, even like, Locked Out of Heaven, right? Like, it's, it's straight, lah. 
it's quite straight right but like you know if you like accent differently right, I was like I can't remember who I with whose car I watched there was this girl wow, the way she played is just like crazy man why like, like the way she like accents right and the way she like and she puts a lot more ghost notes in it I think like like when I play Locked Out Heaven I also play a lot of ghost notes now also oh. like, being how the way she plays it there are like so many different ways to interpret and like you say like you know you can't really get another Pino of course like you can't really get another Joe Dot because the way they play it's not it's not crazy out there stuff right but it's just how they put the notes yeah yeah well speaking of Pino right have you like you know his son is like you go watch the new Tom Nish videos that he then the basis is his son yeah they do this trio thing that is just mind blowing yeah it's his son ah yeah, the Tom, the newest Tomish videos. That's a. Uh, oh yeah, I, 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 I saw one of the Tomish concerts, outdoor concerts, and then they like half the half is he said it's just instrumental. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is so, it so, one? Uh, no, it's not an outdoor one. It's like it's just like uh-huh. I think if you Google Tomish right, then like outside of his quarantine stuff right, it's yeah. the newest videos. Like it's just a, it's a trio thing. It's them oh. nice. It's a uh, Tomish, Rocco Palladino, and yeah. Yusef Days. Oh yeah, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, that, that, that stuff is insane. My favorite is the the one that they did after that was an improv. I can't believe that's an improv. Eh. I listen so many times that eh. I just like there's no way this this stuff is uh, improv. Eh. It's nuts. Tommy is a better guitarist than singer, basically. Yeah. Uh, his his stuff is not super complex also. Yeah. He just knows how to play jazz, but his feel uh, his his feel when he plays it. Yeah. He has his own. He's he's like an artist like on the way of finding his own sound. Oh, you know, nice. which now you can kind of already hear it. Which is, I don't know. Okay, okay. This will cannot yeah. replicate also. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. I think. I think, I we, I think we, uh, we are. We overshot. We overshot by quite a bit. <laughs> it, was, it was fun having you on our CB podcast. Yeah, man. What, what should we What should we call this? Uh, like CB friends. Friends. Yeah. Circuit Breaker Series Zero Two right now. Uh. that's the name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'll call it. I'll call it CB Friends. <laughs> when we post yeah. it, that's what we'll say. Yeah, that's a CB Friends. Okay, thanks for thanks for joining us. Thanks, Alma. Thanks, guys. Yeah, let's I hope see you, you again. Let's see yeah. uh other people. <laughs> yeah, let's see other people. Yeah, I'm really seeing really the same faces. Good life today, man. <laughs> Like, and then like you know the things that we talk about like you know let's let's work on new projects together in the future. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then yeah, and then maybe we we'll have you on another episode again, uh, And maybe like in our showroom, like for the no- regular podcast. Sure, man. Yeah. In the future, hopefully sometime soon. Uh, have you guys like come in for a podcast and? Yeah, also can uh, Yeah. Yeah, we can do it over there. No, we no we take the L eight right, and then we start our podcast at Swing Intro, but then we walk over. <laughs> <laughs> Not like we never do before. We go make. <laughs> yeah, last time, last time we take our, cause our our mixer right is battery powered. Oh wow! So right. we recorded a podcast. It started from the showroom. Then it's right then here. It, yeah. We're gonna use so, it on Saturday to do a podcast in the in the car. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so the LA, so yeah, it's battery powered. So you can like, record and go walk around. And it's so small and light. And then like they just take the mixer. So I was like coming out of the toilet, and then I saw like. Alvin and our, our colleague Lucy just like taking the taking the podcast and their mic and just like like this walking in and like, giggling and running to McDonald's. This sounds so long, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was that funny. Oh, batteries though. Yeah, you can also run from power bank also. Battery oh, behind. Double A. Double yeah, A. Double I think times four. Yeah, or you can reuse like a power bank also because yeah. like, it can be USB powered. Four. Four double A's to run a mixer. That is insane. Yeah. yeah. But I'd rather run to a uh, power bank. Nah. Yeah, I use power bank. Yeah. Yeah, paper, right? Yeah, yeah paper. Well. It's more economic. Huh? Yeah. Okay, that brings us to the end yeah. of our, Thanks our for CB joining Friends our episode. Little Thank you for joining us, Mark. Hey, guys. Yeah. Like this, we went on separate tensions, but it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the meantime, yeah. stay safe. Yeah. Stay, stay healthy. Stay healthy. And we'll see you guys when this whole thing uh will it's finally over. Yeah. <laughs> right. Alright, friend for our friends and listeners at home, you know, stay safe, stay home, wear your mask, keep your droplets to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bye. Uh, Alright, that's it for today. And yeah. we'll end off the podcast here. Alright, bye guys.
Right. Yeah. Be great, man.